Psalm 92. Let me leave it alone. We're going to have an anointing service. We do that every first Sunday. Let's look at this Psalm 92. Seven things that the anoint, seven benefits of the anointing. Seven benefits of the anointing. Let's run number one, verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Say that with me. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Psalm 92 verse 10. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Say that again. Say it again. Who shall be anointed? Well, say it for yourself. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil brings a certain measure of freshness. What, look at me, if you go to the gas station and they want to change your oil and they take out the old oil, how does it look? Dark? Thick? Does it break up? Is it smooth? Huh? Can you see through it? What made it black? Huh? Running in the engine, the body parts of the engine, breaking down, and you check, you see pieces of metal. The oil has lost viscosity. Say viscosity. Viscosity is, have you seen fresh engine oil? How does it look? Huh? Thank you, Claire. What color? Golden or greenish, right? Does it look smooth? Huh? Does it look smooth? Why? Fresh oil. Say fresh oil. It has viscosity. Viscosity is that if you touch it, it sticks to your hand. If you touch the old black oil, it has black. It has uh, water. It has all kinds of things. And some have like little particles of metal look like sand. It's broken up. That's why you need fresh oil. Huh? I said you need fresh oil because fresh oil has many things that it does. And let's look at it. It says, the, mine eyes also shall see. So the first thing the fresh oil does, and does for you, please go back to King James. The fresh oil that uh, when you get oil uh, and it, when, it anoint, when you're anointed with fresh oil, your vision becomes clear. Say vision. You get a clearer vision. Vision becomes clear. Many of us cannot see. I'm not talking of natural seeing. I'm talking of spiritual seeing. Huh? You need to see. And you need to hear. And you need to understand. You need to know what's going on. You need to see which way to go. Who to talk to who to trust, who to open up to, who to lean on. You need to see your way. Have you ever been in a place where you didn't know what to do? Wave at me. You didn't know who to trust or who to talk to. Huh? Have you ever been in a place where you were overwhelmed? Huh? Well, what you needed was the anointing. The anointing opens your eyes to see. And this morning, you will see. You will see great things. You will see awesome things. You will see the way. You will see which way to go. God will bring clarity to your dreams, your visions. When you sleep, you will see clearly. Oh, I said you will see clearly. You need to see. You need to see through people. One day uh, on a Sunday morning, I had this vision. And there was this man in our church. He's no more here. And uh, he came to me with a proposal on that Sunday morning. And I heard myself say something to him. And I woke up. And I got to church. He was dressed the way I saw him. 
I was dressed the way he saw me. I saw myself. And he said exactly what I saw him in the vision say to me. And I heard myself say back to him exactly what I heard myself saying in the vision. And he just turned around and walked out. No fighting, nothing. Why? Your eyes need to see. It talks about anointing us in the book of Revelation with the eye salve. Rub your eyes and say, these eyes will see. Father, open my eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Your vision, you said, I shall see. Number two, verse 11, mine ears shall hear. The second benefit of the anointing is that your ear will hear. You need to hear. Your ears shall hear. Your ears shall shall hear. Your ears shall hear. I don't know about you, but I'm just going to, let me just pray over you that you'll no more hear bad news. Come on, wake up. I said no more bad news. You will hear good news. Come on, come on. I said you will hear good news. I mean, I was in Houston last weekend and uh, this young man that who testified this morning was there. He, he, you know, he works there and he helped and ran around. This is Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday, a week later, he calls me that they are firing people from the job. That, that, that's, that's not good news now. We prayed the next day. They said, well, we're not going to fire you. In fact, we're going to promote you and give you a bigger job. That, that's the kind of good news I want to hear. Come on, now, if you want to clap, clap for Jesus. And uh, the other day I saw it on Facebook. Uh, one of, uh, I think, what was it, uh, Connie? You were the best student in... Uh... Uh, stand up, stand up, darling. You got the what? The Golden GE graduate, GED graduate of the year, ah, uh, in the entire state of Georgia, at the age of what? What? Hold it, ah, uh, at sixty-four. Come on, come on, come on. That, that, oh yeah, that's the kind of good news. Uh, you're jealous. That's why you're not standing and giving God some glory at sixty-four. GED. Come on now. <laughs> that's good news she didn't tell me I saw her on Facebook I'm like girl go for it oh she told me I told you pastor you forgot you testified and you will testify some more say amen you learn to behave she said I told you pa okay you told me alright okay okay you will hear good news I said you will hear good news in the name of Jesus. Verse 12, the righteous shall flourish. The third thing that the anointing does is that it causes you to flourish. Flourish like the palm tree. Flourish. We need to flourish. Not just thrive. Not just survive. Not just uh, hope we make it. Not just, you know... Uh, let's just keep it rolling. No, we're going to flourish, grow, be fruitful, overflow, have more than enough. Oh, say amen now. I said we will flourish. Not just every first uh, five days of the month. Just somehow the bills are paid. Thank God I have two cents left over. No. We will flourish at 62, getting our GED. We will flourish. Uh, maybe she'll get her degree at 70. Who knows? We will flourish. Amen. I said we will flourish. No more dryness, no more struggling, no more making do, no more looking for how we will make it. 
calling people unnecessarily, greeting people you have no business greeting, just so they can see if they can help you. We will flourish. Our cup shall be full. Our cup shall flow over. We will go to the ATM, withdraw money, forget it, and the money will be intact. $400 is a lot of grocery. We will flourish. Overflow. Have more than enough. Our cups will be full. Run over to the saucer, to the table. Mess up the tablecloth. Mess up the carpet. Flow down to our neighbor's houses so they can see that the Lord is blessed. Somebody shout, my cup runneth over. It has to run over. You're not wealthy if your neighbors don't know. I have some neighbors, every now and then you hear, I say, oh, are we going to sleep tonight? My wife says, it's our neighbors. I say, oh, and I say, Holy Ghost, arrest all of them. No dancing tonight. No getting high. Worst thing you made was to become my neighbor. Let the speakers fail. Let the DJ doze off. <laughs> let the drugs backfire. Instead of making them high, let it make them low. Let them fuss and fight over the girls and drive home. Let the girls not show up. Let them have flat tire on the way. <laughs> you shall flourish. Number four, you shall grow. You shall grow. You shall grow. Anything that doesn't grow is not pleasing to God. In Luke, it talks about how Jesus began to grow in wisdom and in favor with God. You need to grow. Your business must grow. Your career must grow. Your life must show signs of progress. Can you imagine a baby who doesn't grow? It would be sickness to be a bad sign. Every six months, every three months, some of them every month, they take them, they measure them, they weigh them, they take their blood, they check them, they check their everything. Why? To see signs of growth. Anything that doesn't grow is sick. It's sick. Anything that doesn't grow is sick. There must be a sign of life and growth. When there's no growth, death comes in. You shall grow. I said you shall grow. Not just grow. Grow to be mighty. Amen. Say amen now. Amen. You will grow. Amen. I'm not preaching. I'm just reminding us of what we're about to receive. I said you will grow. Amen. You will grow and grow well. Our businesses will grow. Amen. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Luke 2 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. In stature, even in height, he grew physically. He grew spiritually. Come on now. He grew. He grew. I said he grew. You must grow. You will grow. Your children will grow. Your husbands will grow. Your wives will grow. Your career will grow. Some of you, your hair will grow in the name of Jesus. There was a lady, uh, she came some years ago. She had this beautiful afro, nice afro. And she came to my office and uh, said, Pastor, I need to see you. I said, see me? And she closed the door herself and locked it. I'm like, oh, my God, I saw the headlines. Oh, black pastor molests lady in the church, or uh, uh, African-born pastor um, caught. And so I started praying. And then the next thing, she pulled off the hair. It was a beautiful wig. And she said, Pastor, and her hair looked like uh, something had eaten it up, parts of it. And she said to me, Pastor, 
I had a dream once, and in the dream, a bird was eating my hair. And I woke up, and this is what I have. And I said, what happened? She said, Pastor, I don't know. I said, your hair shall grow. She said, amen. And then she put her head down. I said, what for? She said, pray over it. I said, I prayed. She said, anoint it. I said, um, I don't seem to know where the anointing oil is. She said, Pastor, it's in your drawer. It's in your drawer. Bring it out. Anoint me. Uh, I said, well, uh, okay. So I brought out the bottle of oil. I wanted to I just pour it on her head. She said, Pastor, put your hand on my head. And they were like spikes. I didn't close my eyes. I kept my eyes open. Who knew? Who, I didn't know what next was coming. And I prayed and I anointed the head and I left. And she left. Probably less than three months later, she came in again. I said, oh God, help me now. Is she going to ask for something else? And she pulled off the wig Beautiful, black, thick, healthy, gorgeous hair. Yeah. Glory be to God. Now, it's not important to you. Whatever is important to you, God can grow it. I've been, uh, uh, I've been in a meeting. It says, and Jesus increased in stature. There was a man, he was in a meeting. I was in that meeting, and Pastor Adeboe said, there's a man here, you're complaining that you're too short, and God has grown you. I think it was five or six inches. And we were like, what? God grow people? And he said, the way you'll know it's you is that you'll notice that your pants are up almost at your knees. And we heard somebody shouting over there. And I praised the Lord. And the man grew. And he could see. In the, because he was too short. When everybody stood up, he was like, oh God, I'm too short. And God grew him six inches or five inches. So that inspired us. And I've seen legs grow. And I've seen hands grow. Huh? And now you have the scripture. Any part of you, you can grow it. And I remember in that meeting, and the preacher said, there's a lady here, you said that your breasts are too small. Your breasts have begun to grow. When you get to the size you want, shout hallelujah. If you don't shout, they will keep growing. We were like, oh, come on, pastor, be spiritual. And then we heard somebody shout, hallelujah. And then the Lord said to Pastor Deboy, there's somebody here. You say your breasts are too big. They're going to begin to shrink. When it gets to the size you want, say amen. If you don't say amen, they're going to all disappear. And we heard hallelujah over the other side. God can grow anything. That's my point. Whatever you need, he will grow it. If you want new lungs, he will grow you new lungs, new knees, new kneecaps, new hands, new fingers, new hair, new skin. Come on, somebody. God will grow you. Growth by the anointing. Number five. I have two more and I'm done. God will grow you, and you need to grow. I said you need to grow. And then look at verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. This is a part of what we're going to be talking about. You shall be planted. Number five, the fifth benefit of the anointing is being planted. You need to be planted. You need to be planted. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Psalm 1 verse 1. Psalm 1 verse 1. No standeth in the way of sinners, no sit in the seat of his comfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. 
Verse 3, and he shall be like a tree. Let's read it together. I want to go and he, let me hear you, like a tree, like a river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season, his leaf shall not also wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Look at the benefits of being planted. You shall be like a tree planted. Then after he's planted, he can bring forth. He will not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. No wonder many of us are not prospering because we're not planted. We're not planted. I met a lady in Minnesota. I went up to preach there, to preach there some years ago. And she said, Pastor, pray. I heard that you were coming to Minnesota. I flew in from California. I said, what do I pray about? He said, Pastor, pray that I will find a, a better job in Minnesota. I'm interested in Minnesota. I like Minnesota. And I said, what do you do for a living? She told me. And she said, Pastor, I really don't live in any state long. I have lived in 18 states. 18 states? What are you looking for? Well, if I hear that there's extra money, I go there. If I hear that they pay better in California, California, here I come. If I hear that now they add another five cents in Minnesota, Minnesota, here I come. I say, lady, let's pray. Father, plant her in Minnesota. Let her no more hear of any raises. 18 states. Now, if the police pulls you over, where are, you going, where are they going to find you? You need to be planted. Some of us are not planted. In church, not planted. Today is with, in life, not planted. In relationships, not planted. Oh, I don't like Joe. He's too short. Oh, I don't like Mike. He's too tall. Oh, I don't like uh, Sam. He, he, he ain't got no pot pack. He got, he got six pack. He, his stomach is too big. Oh, I don't like Joe. His nose is too big. Oh, I don't like John. He ain't got no job. What if he has a job? And he's a six-figure figure income salary. And after the wedding, they fire him. So you married him for his job? Oh, Pastor. Oh, I'm not, I'm, how about Jane? Oh, Jane, she fussing too much. How about Gloria? Oh, Gloria, Pastor Gloria. Oh, there's no glory in Gloria. How about Jemima? Oh, Jemima too fat. Oh, how about uh, Grace? Grace too short. Oh, how about, uh, so who, oh, I, I just met this lady, and she lives in Alfreda. She has a car. She has a house. She's so cute. Oh, what if that cuteness disappears? This is the secret. Marry somebody who loves God. If they love God, they will love you. If they give to God, they will give to you. Don't marry for looks. I'm not saying marry somebody ugly, but marry for by, by the Spirit. Let God lead you. Beauty fades. Money can go. Jobs can be changed. Things can happen in life. Houses can get burnt up. Rain, flooding can occur. Marry for the inner beauty. That endures forever. I'm not saying bring me some ugly Joe from, you know, bring him up here, some washed up, uh, you know, broken down guy. Toyota not working. I have to pray for a new engine first. No, no. Bring me somebody who is in love with Jesus. Somebody in love with Jesus. Say amen. amen. I saw a lady yesterday and the Spirit of God came upon me. Never saw her. And I say, young lady... You're in college? She said, yes. I said, you're beautiful, yes, but beauty will fade. And you want to be a model. Finish your school, graduate, get your degree. 
And her mother said, Pastor, he said, sir, who are you? How did you know? I was just talking to her in the car driving to the, this place. Beauty, we fade. Have you ever looked at the picture of your former boyfriend, girlfriend, 20, 30 years ago? Let me go to the older. Have you looked at your, the, 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 anybody? You're coughing suddenly? Okay. They're not as cute as you thought they were, right? Huh? Beauty will fade. The glory of God never fades. I shall be planted. I shall be stable. I shall prosper. From now on, everything you touch will prosper. Can you say amen? amen. Lift those hands. Let me prophesy. Every hand lifted. Father, let them prosper. Amen. They touch certificates, they will prosper. Amen. You touch businesses, they will prosper. Amen. They touch babies, they will prosper. Amen. They touch new cars, they will prosper. Amen. Everywhere they go, these hands are blessed. Miracles, signs, wonders. Nothing you touch from now shall die ever again. Say amen three times. In the name of Jesus. All right. Are you getting anything? Are you getting anything? Okay. And uh, let's close verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in all age. This is the sixth benefit of the anointing. Bring forth fruit in old age. At 62, getting a GED. 64. Well, I'm just trying to make her younger, you know. 64, getting a GED. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, uh, there's a, guy, a man, a pastor in South Korea called Yonggi Cho. Pastor Yonggi Cho at 70 began to learn new languages, learn German, learn French. And they asked him why. He said to keep his brain very active. When you get to a certain age, you stop keeping your brain active, you begin to lose memory. I'm, I'm thinking of going back to school. I'm trying to decide whether to read law or journalism. I think law would be good. Because there's so many Africans, immigration problems, I'll make money from them like crazy. <laughs> when they call with prayer requests, Pastor, they're about to deport me. I'll say, meet me up in my chambers. Instead of free counsel, they pay for it. There are too many people. And with this, 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 some of these politicians who are threatening to throw us out, well, you, you need an attorney. Just hire me. Oh, I'll make so much money off of you people, man. Amen. You need, you need, you need the anointing. You need the anointing. You shall bring forth fruit. And then, number seven, they shall be fat and flourishing. That fat there doesn't mean natural fat. Isaiah 10, 27. Please put it up for me. They shall be fat. They shall be fat. They shall be robust. They shall be thick. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. Huh? I said they shall be strong. Isaiah 10, 27. They shall be strong. Which one do you prefer? A thin, sickly looking baby or a thick, healthy, hefty baby? Why? Because they are not Now she's speaking to herself. Her, her, her faith failed. And it shall come to pass that in that day his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I said the anointing will destroy the yoke this morning. What is a yoke? The yoke is that thing that won't let you excel in life. 
I love the anointing. Some of us is prayerlessness. We just can't pray. We want to pray. Some of us, we're not strong. Small things throw us off. Some of us are not emotionally strong. It's a yoke. Have you ever had related with a touchy person? Very sensitive, fussy, nasty, mean. Small things get on their nerves. Huh? They need the anointing. I said they need the anointing. I said they need the anointing. I don't know what yoke you brought this morning with you or burden, but the anointing will destroy it. Come on, say amen. Every burden of sickness, disease. I mean, I pray this morning for you that every blood condition be healed. Every liver condition, if ever, be healed. Knee problems, bone problems, shoulder problems, strange headaches. Come on now. Strange cravings. Let them be healed. Skin breakouts. Hair loss. Let them be reversed. In the name of Jesus. Teeth problems. Eye problems. Ear problems. Back problems. Waist problems. Knee problems. This morning they shall be destroyed because of the anointing. If you are saying amen, say stronger amen. Who wants to go to church and go home the same? The church is where we should come for solution. Some of us, there was a lady, she was telling me, say, Pastor, I need to send you some names of some people bothering me. And if there's anybody here, anybody is standing in your way, that mountain shall become low ground. For your sake, they shall be fired. And you shall be hired. Say amen now. I don't know about you. None of you will lose your job before you quit. You will, lose, you will go from that job to a better job. Bigger job. I don't know how many of you need to start your business. But before the end of this year, you will incorporate that business. You will open the account. Clients will come. Contracts will come. Come and say amen for your neighbor. Some of you, you're sick and tired of working for people. As the Lord liveth, people will begin to work for you. I said they will work for you. Nobody, you cannot become wealthy by working for people. They will not pay you enough. They'll pay you enough for you to come back Monday morning. And I'm speaking it by the Spirit. That you need to start... Not just study, God will bring clients and prosper it. You, you may just sit in your house and your business is on the internet. But money is flowing in. Oh, I don't like the way they are saying amen this morning. Who wants to work for people all their life? You're working there in Hawaii, sitting in the sun, drinking coconut water. When are people going to work for you? Worst case scenario, go buy yourself a franchise. And I'm calling the money in too. I'm folding my hands until you're ready to say amen. I'm not going to. I said you open up your business. You will have your franchise. You will have the money. By reason of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Something will happen to you today in the name of Jesus. You will not be broke like your father. You will not be broke like your mother. Uh, this paycheck to paycheck is a curse. We break it in the name of Jesus. Not having money to pay can buy things for your children and take them shopping. When last did you take your wife to a movie? Oh, I got there. When last did you, did you go to shopping and somebody go to the mall and somebody said to you, shop till you drop? I'm praying for that. I dare you take me shopping. I will bankrupt you in 20 minutes.
Glory be to God. And, and this idea of Christians retiring with no money, no benefit, and these heathen people threaten us. If you don't do this, I'll fire you. If you don't do this, I'll fire you. You're walking on eggshells in the office. Is anybody going through that? Those people making you walk on eggshells, they shall walk on no job shell. And you will be the boss. And you will fix your pay. Fix your hours. Free weekends. Free evenings. High pay. Extra bonus. Paid vacation. And then you take your pastor and his family. You swim, I'll pray for you. Uh, in uh, the Bahamas. You go swim, I'll pray. I don't know how to swim. I don't want to swim. I just put my feet in the pool, safe in the hotel. Just sit by the, just, you know, wet my feet and go back and keep praying for you. Amen. It's important for Christians to begin to make real money. Huh? Then we can talk. We can have influence. Huh? The Jewish people come, they take over. The Asians come, they take over. See, nobody talks about this thing in church. And we should talk about it. Huh? Because our children will take over. They will not go through all this. I beg to apply. Can you please 20 uh, resume all over? No! You start a business and the children will take over. And it will grow. Come on now. All this going to beg for money and no, 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 no more begging. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaking. No, their seed, their seed, their children begging for bread. Our children will not beg for nothing. Stand on your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. I said, Our children will not beg. You will not beg. Our children will not beg. And we shall flourish, and we shall be planted, and everything we touch will prosper. Even in old age, we'll do better. I don't know who you are. You're looking for a job. This week, they will hire you. Say amen for that person. Working weekends and working 18 hours and sleeping on the job. No, no, no. No, no more. You will work when you want. Women are not designed to work like that. Women, I know some of you just like working, honey. That addiction to work, I break it off of you. You need to stay home, take care of your children, take care of your husband. Look nice. Fix your nails, fix your eyes, fix your hair. Fix your skin, look pretty, look young, look good, make more babies. 18 hours, 7 days a week, the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I don't know about you, no woman in this church is designed to work like that. Work and work and work till they drop. No, 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 no. They work when they want. They work how long they want. They work where they want. You're working and a heathen is threatening you. And if you don't do this, I'll fire you. Every day they're writing them up, writing them up. Anybody tries to write you up now, the pen will break. The computer will shut down. The write-up will fire. They'll put their name in your name. Lift your hands and give God praise. Father, we thank you for the fresh anointing. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed should be the name of the Lord. Come and give him praise. Thank you. Thank you. This month is your month of double grace. I said it's your month of double grace. It's your month of double grace. I said, it's your month of double grace. Where they're giving people one level of grace, they'll give you double. Double doors will open to you. 
double restoration. Come on, say amen now. You need it. Double. They will give you double portion. Double for your shame. Double for your trouble. Say amen now. Glory be to God.